It's been nothing short of exciting, fun, and interesting living with the Google Nest Hub Max for the last few days, but I'm ready to give you my full review on this device and tell you whether or not it is the smart display we've all been waiting for. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to take the frustration out of automation by ensuring you're spending your money in all the right places. Now we're going through our official review of the Google Nest Hub Max and I can promise you that this is truthful because it is not all a bed of roses. And the reason I'm kind of telling you this up front is because lots of these features that I'm going to talk about today have something I really liked about them and something I disliked about them and so you're going to want to stay all the way to the end to kind of see that differential here between what the features are good for and what they're not. The Google Nest Hub Max is a Google Assistant enabled smart display so that means it has the Google Assistant on board. Now utilizing that Google Assistant is a 10 inch smart display, a Nest camera, a full on Nest camera here and a full stereo system actually in the back of this device. It is capable of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 5.0, and thread communication or connectivity options as well. What it does is no short list and that's because it does have the Google Assistant on board and that means that it gets access to all the standard things that you see with smart speakers, music, video, and even TV now from subscription services like YouTube TV. You have the ability to get recipes, get general information, stocks, weather, all of those basic capabilities. You can essentially ask this device anything. In terms of productivity options, you have things like your calendar to manage. You have lists and even the custom list feature is working very well on this device. On top of that, you have the ability to make phone calls as well as even receive Google Duo and make Google Duo video calls on this device as well. Hey, look at me up here. Oh. Wow. Yeah, it followed you. And I can switch, so I'm just like tapping. I can switch and then I can end call. Oh, and I can turn off the tracking. Okay. No, no, back on. Okay, and then I can mute you. Mute. But this is also Chromecast built in. So that means you can cast to this device and with it having the Google Assistant on board, you can ask it to cast to other devices as well with that same Chromecast feature. So that makes it very powerful in terms of video capabilities. The Nest camera on board here or the camera in general gives us a whole new dimension to a smart display. Now we've had cameras in the past, but there's a big difference between that and putting a Nest camera on here. And what it starts to give us actually access to is facial recognition features which instantly personalizes this device more to what you want to see. So it provides personalized results when using voice match but it also provides personalized information just by looking at the device. Things like your commute or you get personalized recommendations for music, video, news and even events in your area. So there's some real personalization going on as a result of that camera. Now it also expands to something called gestures. Those gestures allow you to go ahead and control music with just the use of your hand. Now I'll talk a little bit more about that in the likes 
but you can control music, you can end alarms or timers that are going off, and you can also stop interactions with the Google Assistant. So if you've accidentally triggered it, then you can go ahead, put up your hand, and it will just stop the interaction right there. Of course, with it being a Google Assistant enabled device, it can control your smart home and it acts as a reasonably good smart home controller. Now I'll talk about some of the details here, but this is the first thread certified smart display that I have seen from Google, from Nest, and from all of their partners there with Thread. The digital photo frame capability, or what we call ambient mode here on this device, is gorgeous. It is a Bluetooth speaker, and it can also control another speaker as a Bluetooth speaker. Now, there's more details, but let's go on to what I really enjoyed about the Google Nest Hub Mac. Speed up, speed up, you I know, know these kids. Don't cops, man, you get arrested? Gosh, don't cops run red lights? Well, yes, some do, but uh, not your dad. In your universe, there's only one Spider-Man, there's another universe. Let's get the easy stuff out of the way. It is beautiful, and I was not sure if I was going to like the form factor, basically just grown larger here when we went from the Nest Hub to the Nest Hub Max. I really wasn't sure about that, but it looks fantastic, and I think it looks much better than this device now that I see the larger one. On top of that, the screen is absolutely fantastic. It It is definitely my favorite smart display screen that I've seen thus far, and it seems to make videos look very, very crisp from almost any source, as well as the photos. When I put on ambient mode, I'm really liking the look and feel of my photo. So everything just looks fantastic on the device. One more thing about the screen here, the touch control and the interface is sharper. And I think it's really the right size for this kind of an interface and the way that Google has provided all these new controls. I think the new size of the display is really important in that regard. The speakers are nothing short of incredible. And when I compare it to the Google Home Max, it's actually better. And the reason I say that is not because the Google Home Max can't blow you away with incredible sound, it can, but the clarity on the Nest Hub Max is unparalleled. There's nothing else I have in my home except the HomePod and a Sono speaker that is on the level of clarity of this device. And when you turn it down really low, one of the things that I always look for is how much of that sound do I still have or do I lose the low end or do I lose the upper end? It is incredibly well balanced. Now don't get me wrong, this speaker is quite loud and it can fill almost any space that I've seen. I took it out to my garage, which is the largest space I have in my home and it absolutely pushed me out of the room. I had to turn it down. So it can be very, very powerful. The Google Assistant is a little bit better in terms of the experience that you have with this. I found it more more accurate in when I when I kind of say the same command to all of these devices and I let them all hear I'm seeing a little more accuracy over here and I think that's based on the two far field microphones that seem able to hear a lot better than these products over here I think Google has really improved that somehow and 10 to 15 feet away with this thing blaring at, at 80% or over and I'm speaking just at my regular voice and it's it's hearing the wake word. So that's pretty impressive capability from that regard. The other performance improvement here on the Google Assistant is really when the, the speed of the results, the processor here seems much more capable of handling everything that's going on and that makes sense with a brand new device. The facial recognition features are a delight and I didn't know going in that they would be this good, but 10 to 15 feet away, this device instantly recognizes me and then starts it brings up my little icon for my account and then it starts to personalize the recommendations to me it gives me a little good morning and then it says here's your commute and it does all that before I'm even really up to the interface so you can kind of see all of that information right away one of the new cool features here from Google and that's face recognition and so just as I enter into the space you can see the little icon pop up there that indicates it knows it's me I can also hide my face and then it will kind of switch over to a base look and other people as they come up it will actually switch to them so there's a real power here in terms of a multi-user experience and this is a lot of what I've seen out of people here on the channel 
asking about. They want to know how does this person get their specific recommendations and voice match was good at that at, at some level but a face match is a whole nother level and really when you think about how this is going to work throughout the world this is going to work a lot better. So I'm really excited to see this capability go forward and it's already very good. Another thing about the Nest camera is the Google Duo video calls and this Nest camera has a a real capability edge over things like the Lenovo Smart Display. And I say that because the quality is extremely high on the video that you're, you're transmitting, but also because it actually moves and follows you. It tracks you as you move around the room or wherever you are. And it's very smooth, very accurate, and very good at what it does. Simply putting up your hand will actually stop this timer from alarming or same thing with alarms. So you can see the little indication right there. You can see it stopped it again. So if you've accidentally woken this up or you've decided that you don't need it, then you can just do that and we'll stop. And this leads me to talk about gestures. Now, gestures is basically you put up your hand and it will take an action. Now I told you it'll start and stop music and it will stop alarms and timers once they're at the end. And you can also stop the interactions and it is very reliable when you know how to use it. But that is all it can do. Like you can't say, uh, go to the next song. It doesn't do that yet. So again, this is something that I think over time we'll see Google adjust and, and give us additional gesture options. The Nest camera, simply put, being on board is also a big benefit to a lot of people. It is a full security camera and can be set up as any other Nest camera is currently. Now, these are all of my likes and I think I want to move on now to some of the things I didn't like so much about the Nest Hub Max. One nice feature is when you turn on the camera, you'll actually see a green light. Now this is standard on Nest cameras now. And when you actually go into it and you're viewing it or anyone is, you will find that the green light blinks softly. And that Nest camera is a disjointed experience. Now, if you're setting up the device, you will find that number one, you set up the Nest Hub Max, you get a camera on it and it does the facial recognition, but then you have to set up the Nest camera separately. And this is still done through the Nest app right now, although it does cause you account migration. So that's another problem for those of you who have a Nest account and you wanna maintain that, as soon as you set up that Nest camera, you have to migrate your account. So you don't have to set it up right now, and that's my honest recommendation to people who want to maintain their Nest account, but that means you're not using one of the capabilities on the device. The other disjointed component is facial recognition works when you've set up the Google Nest Hub Max, but then if you were to set up the Nest camera like I have, it has a familiar faces component to it, and those are two separate things. So I was walking into the room and I would get a notification on my Nest application that it didn't recognize me because I hadn't set that up. And over on the Nest Hub Max, you could see it instantly responding and recognizing me as a person. So it's disjointed in a few ways, and even the management of all the settings for that camera is, is in the Nest app. So there's a number of inconsistencies that you've got to get used to, and then they will shift over time as we know Google and Nest get closer and closer together. Now we talked about gestures and facial recognition and how good they were. They are very reliable when you're looking at the device. So I'm looking at the camera right now, and if I was to head over at about 40, 50 degrees here as an angle off to center, then what would happen is my face recognition would still work, but it would not work with gestures. And so gestures kind of has to be something that you're dead on and that lighting is, is relatively good in. Uh, at night, it's definitely not working. You don't need great lighting, but at night, 
my gestures are not working simply because it's not seeing me, it's not recognizing that. Now, that is something that I think they could correct over time, but it's not there right now. And then that angular component, I get why they struggle with it, but gestures just does not work if you're not within that kind of 40 to 50 degrees of center. And then facial recognition, you can get up to about 70 degrees out and it will still work. A little aside, the ultrasonic capabilities or the ultrasonic sensing, I really haven't seen it. I don't know what's what's going on. I'm, I've come in in the evenings when it's really dark, haven't seen it really react. So I don't think that's working right now, but maybe somebody can tell me different in the comments if they've seen Seen something working. The thread hub, which was a major component for me, is nothing short of underwhelming. Now, what has happened here is this is a thread certified device and it has the capability of connecting to an existing thread network. And I spoke with Google support about this. We kind of talked through what was possible and what wasn't. It's not a border router. So that means you can't start the thread network in your home with this device. So it can be added and really becomes a repeater in that kind of a thread network. So that's nice to have but if you don't already have a thread network started this doesn't help you at all and I wonder if this will change over time and it should change over time because this is honestly a very disappointing component to me and I think a lot of people were waiting for Google to kind of launch their automation capabilities here but there's no differences in routines there's no differences in what this can control really and therefore it's not really doing anything new for us in terms of home automation for you international folks like me or outside of the US well you're going to be missing some of the features I mean, even during setup, I didn't have any access to any sort of TV services. And you can get that YouTube TV subscription service in the US, but you can't get that here in Canada. You can't get that in most countries. And then you don't even have access during setup to set up other TV or video services. So Netflix also does not work no matter where you are. You can't even cast Netflix to this. That's a big problem with the screen looking as good as it is. I want to see these services get out to other countries very, very quickly. With all this said, my recommendation has to be twofold. It's, it's kind of one for people who are new to the smart speaker or smart display game, and then one for those of you with some of these other devices sitting next to me. So let's start with those of you who are new. Now, what I'll tell you is I had to kind of step back and stop comparing to these devices because honestly, you got to think about the hardware level and the software level, and they are incredible on both both counts in this device. To think about what you're getting for $230 US, and we'll see the sales, I think they'll be very aggressive, but I don't know if we're going under 150 here ever. So we'll see with that pricing, but still, even at, even at that regular pricing, this is a very good smart display or smart speaker to start with. It has incredible capabilities, and you're not going to go wrong. You're not overspending, and I really can recommend this as the best Google Assistant display overall. Now, the other side of my recommendation is for those of you who have some of these devices in your home, some of these other smart displays, Really what I'm going to tell you here is that the upgrades are significant, but they are incomplete. And really, you know, for someone who owns these kinds of products, you're going to kind of look at this device and go, yeah, that's, that's a great improvement of feature, but I'm frustrated. And the Nest camera is a great example of that. It's disjointed experience. The fact that you're going to have to migrate your Nest account in order to install the device is a frustration and a real issue for a lot of people. The missing improvements in Google's automation and the thread border router kind of being missing here on this device to really give you that start in a whole new world of automation. Both of those things or all of those things might cause you to wait a little bit here and see what the game is from Google, how much they're going to deliver on here. If those things don't really bother you and you're just looking for an upgraded experience, I can tell you this is 100% the best multimedia experience there is out there today. So guys, you're going to be able to go ahead and watch more about the Nest Hub Max. We're going to build a pretty big volume of videos here about this device because it is top level. So go ahead, watch those now. They're up on screen. Otherwise, don't hate. 
automate.